Travelling abroad, well, I do a lot of it and I can't stop. I have suitcases in every room. Finding out about the British Isles and the Republic of Ireland and all the islands around, the Channel Islands, magic. Travel, that's the thing, travel. Hi, Jonah, thank you. It's just about a dysfunctional family, the best of friends and a lot of bad behaviour. Quite nice, actually. I think one of the most thrilling moments on my Spice Trail adventure was actually getting to the Banda Islands, one of the most remote places on Earth. I couldn't even find it on the map when we were going there. I was studying and looking and looking, these tiny dots. We had to take a 12-hour ferry from Ambon, which itself is a pretty remote part of Indonesia, and then sailing all through the night and filming on board the ship and then waiting in the morning and suddenly seeing these little islands appearing and knowing that this is where, long ago, it was the only place on earth that the nutmeg trees grew and the great rush of the world to come and get this fabled spice. The world is huge, and although I've been to an awful lot of it, there are always places you go, oh, I wish I'd been there. So I wish I'd been to Buenos Aires. I've never been to South America at all. When I travel, I always take, well, a huge piece of cloth. So they usually come from Africa, usually with sort of messages written on them. And uh, they're called kangas or something like that. And the great thing about it is you can twist it around you and use it as a kind of sarong for if, so you don't have to take a dressing gown. Or if, for instance, you're swimming or coming out of the water, you can just use that. But more importantly, on my kind of traveling, is that if you've got a terrible pillow, you can make your own pillow by um, rolling up your clothes and wrapping the cloth around it. If you're in a Muslim country and you have to cover your hair, you can use it as a, as a head shawl. Magic. So when you go, take a piece of cloth and always take with you, well, I would, Yves Saint Laurent or Yves Gauche. People going on holiday always make the mistake of A, taking too many things in too many varieties. So I always have a sort of basis, which is to have white or black or a sort of something underneath, which would be, let's say, trousers and a top. And then something bright like this, which can go over. Always roll your clothes, because where I am, I have to get up sometimes at four in the morning with very bad lighting and have to go out looking camera ready. And if you roll the clothes up neatly, first of all, when you open your suitcase, because you don't have time to unpack, you can look at what your things are and you go, that's it. You get it out and it has no decreases. Result, do that. Um, well, this is beach holiday or city break. Cities I adore because they're always full of history. But there's something about beaches with the sucking of the sea coming in and out, the chance of finding shells, um, maybe being caught in a storm, climbing over boulders, looking in rock pools and things like that. I think I might choose beach. It wouldn't be lying on the beach to go brown. Although before I die, which won't be tomorrow, I want to lie on a beach and just go the color of a leather crocodile bag. Some of the food you eat on some of the trips I do are things that you are either besotted by and think I must do this when I get home, use these particular spices. And some of them, like when I was traveling in Japan, they said, take something to eat on the train and we're going to be filming you on the train eating this Japanese snack. And so I chose something which looked like a little, mm, it looked like a little sort of bagel and it was filled with thistles. So I thought, oh, that'll be lovely. And I took a bite of it and I became completely silent for about 20 minutes because whatever it was sort of imploded in my mouth and got bigger and softer and fluffier. And it didn't taste of anything. Both travel in the UK because no matter how long you've lived in these gorgeous islands, you will never have seen the half of it. I live in London and every time I come, um, I find something new. Finding out about the British Isles and the Republic of Ireland and all the islands around, the Channel Islands, magic. Traveling abroad, well, I do a lot of it and I can't stop. I have suitcases in every room. Travel, that's the thing, travel. 
My husband Stephen is a musician and I am a lover of music. So although I don't play instruments, I love it. I listen to music all the time. It's a variety of music, just like him. He listens to a variety, but he's a classical musician. He's, a, he's an organist, a pianist. He's played masses of different instruments, but he's a conductor and a composer. And there's nothing he doesn't know about music. So we've made some podcasts, which are called Joanna and the Maestro, which is me actually in conversation with my husband, asking all the kind of dumb questions, somebody like me who doesn't know an awful lot but, cannot, but is interested to know more, asking him about anything I want, and he's always got a fabulous answer. They've been thrilling to do, and revelationary to me about music, about understanding more about where music comes from and how it affects everything. But most importantly, these podcasts are to show that there's no division in music. So classical music, which can include concerts and operas and string quartets and things, aren't for rich people or elite people or clever people or snobbish people. They're for all of us. And so we want people to think, I could go to that. I'd love that. That music sounds great. I'd love to be there. Stephen is so much more sophisticated in his musical knowledge and musical tastes that sometimes he leaves me behind with some of his extremely modern or esoteric kind of music. Some of it I go, do you know I love music, but I'm not sure about this. And then he tells me, but it's like art. It's like anything. It's like deconstructed Shakespeare. If you just open your heart and your mind and your head and your ears and just follow on from that, you find you get to be more affectionate to things you thought you would absolutely hate. I love the idea of a playlist because I don't really have that. So if I'm listening to a piece of music, I might choose a whole thing like a symphony and Beethoven's Eroica number three, his symphony number three is just ravishing. I also have a soft spot for Rossini and if you're ever depressed or ever downhearted or ever can't think what to think about or how to get rid of the horrors of, the, of a bad day behind you. Put on, um, let's say, The Silken Ladder by Rossini, and I promise you, now this is me, I don't tell lies, I promise you, you'll feel better at the end of it. So I'm not really up with, with the new, new music. So if somebody said, hum me a Harry Styles song, a great silence would ensue. It isn't that I don't adore Harry, I think he's adorable, I just don't know his music. If I wanted a cosy night in and I wanted to listen to somebody I completely adore, well, there's a huge mass of them, but right at the top of the tree forever, for most of the world since time began, is Elvis Presley. He just cannot be faulted and I adore his music and he always makes me feel better. And I did a documentary about him and he also turns out to have been one of the sweetest, kindest, most generous, most self-effacing, adorable men. So I love Elvis. The funny thing about switching off completely is that I would go for silence in a book, but if I had to listen to music to switch off completely, I would um, always choose classical music. And I think I might choose some of Chopin's Nocturnes because I would choose somebody like Dean Woolipati or I might have uh, more up-to-date Stephen Huff. Um, one of the greats playing, playing music, which can be played quite plonkingly by children in school, um, or in the music rooms in my old convent where I went to school. But when it's played by a magician, and musicians are magicians, it takes you to a different world. And the fact that it's got no words spoken, and in a strange way, music seems to be a different, everybody knows this, it's a different world you move into. Words without music, music without words. The other day reading it. Thank you for wearing those bikinis, you ladies, because you've inspired me to never give up wearing my bikini. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Mm. Hello there, I'm Lorraine, and I am very excited because I'm doing a shoot for Good Housekeeping, and it's on the cover.